My sister Tiffany and I set out on an epic Oregon Coast road trip. Join our adventure as we journey from Astoria down to Brookings and the many places in between. We'll see stunning viewpoints, chase gorgeous waterfalls, taste some delicious local flavors, and experience what makes the Oregon Coast so unique. It's hard to tell in the video with all that rain, but our view is amazing. It feels a lot closer than it looked in the pictures, so that was a really nice surprise. I feel like it's usually the opposite when you book online. It's usually like less exciting when you get there, but this was even better. If you're planning on doing any hikes on the coast that will take you up to the ocean or a beach, it's important to know the tide tables so you don't get trapped someplace inaccessible during high tide. Tide tables can be found at a lot of places throughout Brookings. We stopped by the condo's office to get ours, but you can also find them online. Just make sure you take a screenshot of it before losing cell service. We had planned to do a hike this morning, but there's a high wind warning, and with the type of hike that it is, I didn't feel comfortable going and doing it during this time. It's super rainy right now too, so it's just safer if we wait. But we hung out at the cabin a little bit, and now we're gonna go get lunch. Hopefully when we're done, the weather will have cleared enough for us to be able to go and do some hikes. We had lunch at the Hungry Clam, and afterwards we walked around a few of the little shops in the area. Dutch Bros started in Oregon, so it was a perfect place to try it. It has since expanded to other states, but my sister and I still don't have one in our neck of the woods, so we made sure to get some before heading to our next stop. And happy to report that after just one visit, we have already become fans of it. When it comes to iconic Oregon Coast viewpoints, Natural Bridges is undoubtedly one of them. So it made sense that when planning for this trip, it was my number one goal to see. It's located within the Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor at the Natural Bridges viewpoint and is just a short distance from the parking lot. We took the path to the left of the viewpoint thinking it was going to lead us to a different iconic view of natural bridges, but we were in for a surprise. It turned out this trail took you to a viewpoint that was right off the side of the road. It was beautiful, but you could literally walk to it from the parking lot in a fraction of the time. We felt like there were some areas of the trail that were sketchy enough to make us not suggest others to do it, and there are plenty of other amazing viewpoints in the area with safer access. Trails within the Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor are known for being extremely rugged and potentially deadly. At the time of editing this video, I learned a couple days prior that a man fell to his death within the Natural Bridges area. It's a beautiful place to visit and explore, but please remember to use extra caution when visiting this area and any place along the coast with cliffs, slippery rocks, and waves. If you're uncomfortable, give yourself permission to turn back. We checked out another viewpoint on the side of the road on our way to the Arch Rock Viewpoint. The Arch Rock Viewpoint is a small area but packs a big punch. It has multiple viewpoints and a short path connecting them. It also has picnic tables, benches, and toilets. We actually stayed here a while strolling around and soaking in the many amazing views.
We made our way to another viewpoint along the coast. This viewpoint ended up having a trail to it, so we only did a little bit of it since we didn't know anything about it, but we enjoyed what we saw. We encountered this a lot along the Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor. We're used to seeing signs for viewpoints that are accessed via a pullout, but here we found a lot of them required a trail or some full-on hiking. I'd suggest looking up the viewpoints beforehand to see what you have time for and to know any safety precautions for those trails you plan to do. I really enjoyed stopping at the different viewpoints around Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor. It's such a fun way to fill your day. Now we are going to have dinner and soak in the hot tub. It was our last day on the coast and I had yet to do one of my favorite things, explore the tide pools at low tide. I found a beach nearby that had plenty to explore and we made our way there. Upon arrival, we found two beach access points and we explored the part that was closer to the beginning, but it looks like the farther end where the restrooms are at might be more suited for exploring the tide pools. We just didn't have time to do both sides, but we still had an amazing time and found a lot of sea life. We're at Harris Beach at low tide to check out the marine gardens and hopefully find some starfish. Let's go. Coming for low tide is one of my favorite things to do in the Pacific Northwest. 
make sure you check the tide tables and come a little bit before low tide so that you're coming out when the tide is going out. It gives you a little bit more time. Be careful where you step. Check out the low tide etiquette and always be aware of the tide and set an alarm.